Well, hello. Today is Monday, April the 6th, 2020, one day after Palm Sunday. I hope you all had a meaningful uh, day yesterday, um, learning from God's Word and worshiping a little bit together. Uh, my focus today, and this is going to be brief, but my focus today is to share a little bit about uh, following Palm Sunday. Regarding Palm Sunday, you know, we talked uh, last video, at least on Palm Sunday, if you saw that, we focused on the idea of what was happening on that Palm Sunday. Jesus' disciples, the followers, those who were curious, those who were seeking a miracle, those who were true believers, even some that were skeptics, even some of the religious leaders standing somewhat afar off, but they all sort of took in what was happening uh, during that Jesus parade of his triumphal entry into Jerusalem and for the disciples of Jesus the true believers worshiping praising declaring him as king that was the high point of their life with Jesus up until this point and then after Palm Sunday it was a steady decrease down until the crucifixion of Jesus so today I want us to follow up on the day after or what happened immediately after of Palm Sunday and I'm going to be reading from Matthew chapter 21 today and I'll start in verse 10 uh, Matthew 21 verses 10 through 17 and this is again a follow-up of Jesus triumphal entry into Jerusalem he's just come into Jerusalem he's just come in with this Jesus parade with all these people and this is what immediately happens and when he had entered Jerusalem, all the city was stirred up, saying, Who is this? And the multitudes were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. And Jesus entered the temple and cast out those who were buying and selling in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who were selling doves. And he said to them, It is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it into a den of thieves. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. But when the chief priests and the scribes saw these wonderful things that Jesus had done, and the children who were crying out in the temple saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they became indignant and said to him, Do you hear what these are saying? And Jesus said to them, Yes. And have you never read? Out of the mouth of infants and nursing babes you have ordained praise for yourself. And he left them and went out of the city to Bethany, and he lodged there. If you remember, Bethany is where Math, um, Mary Martha and Lazarus lived. That's where Jesus started his triumphal entry prior to entering into Jerusalem. So Jesus comes into Jerusalem after the triumphal entry and the first thing he does is he goes straight to the temple. Now the Jewish religion in their day, in Jesus' day, had become somewhat formal, uh, legalistic, ritualistic, cold and non-relational. We refer to sometimes as our, um, our, our, our relationship with God through faith in Jesus is just that. It's a relationship rather than a religious system. That's the better way to view it. That's the way God viewed it. It's a relationship uh, with us. God loves us. Uh, the Bible says uh, God's people are referred to as his married, the one he is married to. And in the New Testament, the church, the believers in Christ, are referred to as the bride of our Lord Jesus Christ. Those are not intended to be cold, legalistic relationships. Those are meaningful uh, and intimate relationships. <clears throat> so Jesus, if we remember Jesus' first message, and it's in Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. Jesus began his ministry proclaiming, Repent! for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. When he entered Jerusalem, he was turning over the money changers in the temple. He was uh, uh, 
speaking out a rebuke against the religious leaders, not just the merchants there, but the religious leaders that allowed all this to kind of begin to build up to what it was, which was a big barn, a market, and what was originally, it seems, people coming in to sell animals for the worship services and the sacrificial system. They were cheating people and charging really high prices for these animals that were of a necessity for the Jewish worship services. So the religious leaders had allowed that. Yeah, the merchants were to blame as well. And so Jesus comes in and turns over the money changers and uh, demonstrated righteous indignation towards those who were uh, abusing the system and, and treating the people unjustly. But Jesus first message was repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That was what he was trying to get across to these not just the merchants but to the religious leaders. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent not just from personal specific sin but repent from this whole cold legalistic ritualistic system that the Jewish faith religion uh, had become. For us today, Scripture speaks of the people of God, or it speaks of our life as being a house, and the people of God being His people, and our own specific bodies as a temple, temple of the Holy Spirit. For every true believer, the Holy Spirit comes to indwell our lives, works on us from the inside out. And 2,000 years ago, um, as Jesus proclaimed repentance, we would do well to take that to heart today. Lent leads up to Holy Week. Lent is intended, at least, to be a time of repentance, and a repentance that stays that way, not just you know, prepares you for something, and then after Lent, we just pick back up where we left off. But we would do well during Holy Week to really think about Jesus' message of repentance, his perspective on those who allowed the temple to become so defiled with people bringing in injustice and a legalistic system, cheating the people. So I believe we would do well to be to do these two things, to be keeping these things in mind over Holy Week, to be willing to be convicted of sin by God's Holy Spirit. Can be convicted means to understand there's a right and wrong. There's good and evil, and there's responsibility and consequences, and we're in, involved in those things right in there. How, are I, how am I living? How are you living? What does God's Word say about our lifestyle? Be willing to be convicted about our sin, and to be willing to confess our sin once we are convicted of it. Too often, Christians, amongst others, are convicted of our sin but we feel so light about it that we think it's not a big deal so we don't really become too upset about the sin that we've been convicted about we kinda ignore it before long that conviction kinda dissipates kinda fades away we're no longer convicted and we don't longer no longer feel uneasy about our sin be, uh, be ready, allow God to convict us of our sin and for God's word to convict us. Be ready to confess our own personal sin before God and repent from that. Repentance means to, you know, to make effort to turn away from our sin. It's a genuine desire to not repeat the same offense, not continue doing the same thing we've been doing. And allow ourselves through this to experience God's cleansing process in our lives. God wants to give you a fresh start and a clean slate through faith in Jesus Christ. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. That's the promise God gives for us. But also for people like us who are believers right now, if I'm a Christian, you're a Christian, we still slip into sin occasionally. And the Apostle John in his first epistle, 1 John, spoke to the church, to the Christians, and he said this, if we confess our sins, Christian, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's to the church. As we walk through Holy Week, allow this week, a week-long holiday, to be used of God to change us forever, to draw closer to God than we've ever been. 
I'm going to post another uh, booklet, Facing Our Flaws, The Battle Within, Facing Our Flaws. I'm going to put that as available for you on the link today. As you look at this, I hope you found this to be meaningful. I'd love to hear from you about this. Uh, God's blessings to you on this holy day. Lord willing, I'll connect with you tomorrow morning. Thank you so very much. Have a great, great holy week.